One of the questions people ask me all the time is, where should I live? I help a lot of folks move to Austin who have never been here. Maybe they've never been to Texas or they've been here once or twice for work. It's hard to get a good feel for um, the suburbs and what's going on outside of the city when you don't live here. So if you're thinking about moving to Austin or to one of the suburbs, here's what you need to know before you get into a deep dive. And if you want to go deep on any of the suburbs, I've got videos all over my channel about every place you can think of. Georgetown, Round Rock, Cedar Park, Hutto, Lakeway, all the things. So go ahead and check those out. And I'm going to link to um, one at the end that I think you're going to love. By the way, my name is Tiffany Moore with Rise and Shine Realty. I put out videos every week showcasing the market here in Austin, Texas, and I help folks buy and sell homes in Austin and the Austin area. So if you want to make sure that you stay up to date on whatever's going on in the current market, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want my free guide on how to buy your first home in Austin, comment below and I'll send you the link. Here are five things no one tells you about living in the Austin suburbs. One, each suburb is different. So a lot of people who contact me about moving to Austin and living in a suburb ask if they're pretty much the same or if they should look in all of the suburbs and just pick a house they like the best. And the answer is no. So each suburb is different. Um, and they all have their own character and personality and things like that. So there's some suburbs like Hutto and Kyle that definitely give off more of a rural feel and others like Cedar Park and Ron Rock, they give off more of like a high growth and up and coming vibe, especially Leander. So Leander is somewhere kind of in between rural and high growth because it's in the middle of the process of growing. So right now, if you're driving through Leander, there are a lot of communities, lots of new construction going on, but in between those communities, it is very rural. Like there's farmland, there's cows out here. I had a family come in from California one time and they were driving from the airport, which is all the way downtown, all the way up north, through Austin, Cedar Park, and even through like existing Leander until they got to the new construction areas. And they were not expecting what they saw. They were like, where are we? How far did we drive to get here? Cause you went from like the big metropolis of the city into just like farmland and longhorns and like cotton fields and things like that. So Leander is kind of a mix of both because it's going through their growth phase right now. So it is kind of rural still in some areas, but there's so much construction going on that it's growing into um, a big metropolis and a big growth area. Leander is going to be booming in the next few years. There are a handful of live, work, play developments in the works, so they're coming. But today, it's really just a bedroom community. Some suburbs have more outdoor activities. Some don't have as many. Some are smaller, some are bigger. So really, all the areas that we're going to be talking about are very different. You really need to think about what is important to you. Make a list of your priorities, discuss them with a realtor, and make sure that you are matched up to live in the neighborhood that's going to meet all of your needs. Here are some of the questions I walk through with my clients when we're trying to decide where to live. Where will you be working? Are you going to be working from home or from the office? And if it's from the office, how frequently you're going to have to go in and how long of a commute are you comfortable with? Because a lot of folks are moving out from Austin uh, to Austin from like California or New York, and they're used to this like hours long commute. And they tell me this they're like, oh, we're used to driving, you know, one and a half, two hours, no big deal. It's like, right but we're trying to get away from that life. Like there's a reason you're leaving that and you're moving to Austin. So what would be your ideal commute? What kind of commute are you comfortable with where you can still live the kind of life that you want? Also, what do you like to do? What's important to you to live close to? If you wanna be like in the mix and feeling the vibe of the city, then you're gonna to wanna to live in the city center or anywhere within like 20 to 25 minutes of it. Any longer than that is gonna, that drive is gonna keep you from going into the city and doing the things that you wanna do. Also, what are your hobbies? Do you like hiking, swimming? Do you want to go to the new restaurants? Do you want to go to the theater? What kind of lifestyle do you want to live when you move out to Austin? And then are schools important to you? And this is not just for folks who have kids. Like, yes, folks who have kids who go to public schools are obviously going to uh, want to be very selective about the school areas that they're living in. But school districts and their performance can have a big impact on the appreciation of your home over the years. Now, this is more true in the suburbs. So I, I've said this in a couple other videos that this is a general rule of thumb. And it is mostly true in the areas that we're talking about, like Cedar Park, Round Rock, Georgetown, Pflugerville. Um, in general, the more expensive the houses are, the better performing the school district is. Right or wrong, that's just a correlation that's out there. 
So one area that this is not really the case, it, which is really funny, is in Austin proper. So in the city, in the city of Austin, that's where houses are most expensive per square foot. And unfortunately, the schools in those districts are not performing as well as the ones in the suburbs. Um, I use greatschools.org when we're talking about school performance, school ratings, things like that. I highly encourage you to check that out so you can see, okay, what's going on in these neighborhoods that I like? And you can see for yourself the, what the results of the schools are and if that's something that you're interested in. So the last question is price, and this is really gonna play a big role in where you decide to buy a home. We're gonna talk about that next, but just know that if you want to live in the city and be in the middle of the mix and the hustle and bustle, to have easy access to the restaurants and the new bars and all that stuff, the shopping, like the stuff that you're moving to Austin for, you can have it, there is a price tag associated with it. So the number two thing to know is that the suburbs can be cheaper than living in Austin, but not always. A lot of folks think the further away you get from Austin, the more affordable the homes become. And this is true for the most part, but not in every case. Home prices can vary widely from suburb to suburb, depending on a lot of factors. For example, Lakeway has a lot of lakefront homes with beautiful views, and it's farther out than other areas and other suburbs, but that area is very affluent, and homes run into the millions and the tens of millions in Lakeway. And this has some of the most highest priced homes in the Austin area, and it's one of the most expensive areas. But the city of Austin is the most expensive when we're talking about price per square foot. It's just that most of the homes in the city are smaller than the homes in Lakeway, and that's why the homes in Lakeway have an overall higher price tag. So also keep in mind that pretty much all areas surrounding Austin are growing, which means that home prices are rising in these suburbs just like they are in Austin. We are kind of in a lull right now as far as the market goes. We expect to see the market stabilize over the next few months, which may mean price reductions for some homes. What we're seeing right now is homes in Austin are taking longer on the market to sell, like more than four days, which is the norm that we've had for the past like two years. Right now, it's really not uncommon to see a home on the market for one month or even two months before it goes under contract. And we are still seeing multiple offers on homes, but those offers are now below the list price, which I think is really interesting. So home may be on the market for two to three weeks, um, and then you're making offers and you're thinking, oh, okay, I can negotiate. You know, it's listed at 600, let's negotiate starting at 575. All of a sudden you have two or three offers coming in and they're also thinking the same thing. So it's like, okay, we still have to be competitive, um, but maybe we don't have to go 30, 40, 50, 100,000 above asking price like we were a couple years ago. The reason for this market stabilization is the increase in interest rates. What's happening in the market is exactly what was intended to happen, to slow the market down because inflation was at 9.1%. So it's slowed for now. The third thing is that the suburbs equal traffic. You might look at a map of the Austin suburbs and say to yourself, oh, these places aren't that far from Austin. I can get to Austin anytime, but do not be fooled. Traffic makes these suburbs a longer drive than you would anticipate. So Austin roads were not built for the kind of traffic and the growth the city is experiencing now, which is evident anytime you try to go pretty much anywhere. So this is another factor you need to consider when you're buying a home in the suburbs. Do I wanna to drive to Austin a lot? Am I okay fighting traffic to get there? How far am I willing to go? How long do I want to sit in my car? Is it 15 minutes or is it an hour? This is going to help you decide if you want to live in a suburb and if so, how far are you willing to go and travel to get downtown or the things that you want to do? So the fourth thing is that Austin suburbs are not exactly like Austin. What I mean by that is a lot of folks move to Austin for the keep the Austin weird vibe, the laid back and the funky feel that everyone loves and everyone thinks of when they come to Austin. Basically like Willie Nelson embodied in a city. So you might think that the suburbs are the same way, but that's really not the case in general. Some are more laid back, some are a little bit more like Austin, but others are a little bit more conservative and a little bit more just like it could be a suburb anywhere in the country. You wouldn't necessarily know that it's an Austin suburb because um, it doesn't really have that uh, funk, you know, or that the je ne sais quoi that, that Austin really has. So this is another thing you're gonna need to discuss with your realtor when you're trying to figure out the best area. Are you looking for a funky, independent, a little bit more hippie vibe? Or are you looking for a totally like classic suburban feel? So here's my quick take on the vibe of a few suburbs that people ask me about most frequently. And these are just my personal opinions. So 
take with that information what you will. So I get this question a lot, Round Rock versus Cedar Park. I am partial to Cedar Park um, and I have a hard time really putting my finger on why. It's called Cedar Park for a reason. Side note, I have a video all about why it is called Cedar Park, so check that out. Um, really, at the end of the day, there's a ton of trees there. It's beautiful, it's very green, there's a ton of cedar trees. Um, it's really gorgeous. There's some beautiful topography, they've got hills, canyons in some areas. Overall, Cedar Park has a more friendly and homey vibe to me than Round Rock does, and I don't really know why. So Lakeway, this is a general vibe that I get from Lakeway. It definitely doesn't apply to every neighborhood, but in general, Lakeway, Lakeway has a very like country clubby vibe to me and kind of for good reason. One, there's a ton of country clubs there. There's lots of golfing, there's lots of tennis and it is on the water. So you have a lot of boating options. Politically, I would also say that Lakeway is a fairly conservative vibe. There are a few pockets of Lakeway here and there that are kind of tucked away and they're doing their own thing. Like folks who live out there, live out there specifically to not be bothered. Like they don't call the police if something happens, if you understand what I'm saying. So one of my clients bought a home in this area specifically to be away from the hustle and bustle, to be away from everything. They wanted to be close to the water, but they didn't really want to be in like a conservative country clubby vibe. And there's definitely those little pockets out in Lakeway, which is why I say in general, it gives me a country club vibe, but not every area. And this area that I'm talking about is very eclectic. It's definitely not cookie cutter. You've got everything from like a trailer sitting on a half an acre lot that's got car parts and stuff in the front yard to a beautiful uh, brand new build that's like, you know, a million and a half. And it's got like all the new modern contemporary fixtures and things like that. These two homes exist in this same area in Lakeway that I'm talking about. So Georgetown, there are really two areas of Georgetown. One is on the historical side near the downtown in the square, close to the river. I love the old homes in this area of Georgetown. It's beautiful. The architecture is amazing. Um, the style is really gorgeous. They've got big old trees on big lots and just like a lot of character. One of my clients is buying a home right now in Georgetown that is across the street from the San Gabriel River. And when we went to see it, it's on like a third of an acre. It's gorgeous. And they're just like two deer chilling in the yard, just hanging out. And every time I go back in the neighborhood to check on the house, there's just deer in people's yard. And if you like that, like this is the most picturesque, amazing neighborhood. They can walk to a trail and like walk by the river and stuff. Um, not everyone loves that, but we did. And that's one of the reasons that we bought the house. But this is like a totally different vibe than what you're going to get from the new construction area that's going on in Georgetown. So the other area of Georgetown is like, it kind of melds of like Georgetown, Leander and Liberty Hill. They all kind of mesh together. And that's where like all of the new construction is happening right now. So it's a totally different vibe. The new construction is going to have kind of smaller lots. Um, not as many large mature trees that kind of clear the land for the most part and put in kind of like baby trees and shrubs and things like that when you move in. Number five, Austin suburbs are not all the same size. And this is really good news for home buyers. Whatever side you're looking for, you are gonna find it in a suburb. We've got large suburbs like Round Rock, which has about 147,000 people, all the way down to small towns like Bee Cave with like 9,000 people. So this is another discussion that you need to have with your realtor. Do you want a small town feel or do you want a place that's exploding with growth? Are you okay without a Walmart within a five minute drive? Things like that. So once you've narrowed down your choices based on your preferences, what you're looking for, and finding the right home is gonna be much easier and much less time consuming and definitely less stressful. So if you wanna get into a dive on a particular suburb, start with Georgetown and check this video out next.